Hello again, everybody. We're going to talk about the periodic table today. So, um, again, probably a review for some people, maybe new for other people. Now, again, if we were in class, we would be spending a lot more time talking about different parts of the periodic table. Um, but we've already done it before in grade nine. So let's just get right down to it. Now, remember, people have been using elements since ancient times. All right. We feel like periodic table. We're so modern. But we were first having um, we were first in a Bronze Age years ago. Right, which which went into an Iron Age, and then even if you look up some ancient, when they've been digging out ancient tombs in Egypt, they find that there's a whole pile of gold jewelry that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. So we've been using elements since very very early times. Now one of the first things, this is so interesting to you. It's another thing you could spend so much time um, looking up. Um, we had the age of the alchemists. So alchemy was basically a branch of philosophy. We kind of look at it like it was chemistry, but it was actually philosophers who were trying to figure out a bunch of things. So one of the things they were trying, this is like a little picture of what, you know, that what they think alchemists look like. Um, they were fantastic at writing down all their recipes into books. So when they were trying to do any of their experiments, they wrote and wrote and wrote. They invented all sorts of really neat glassware and types of um, equipment that were used for doing chemistry, even though it was a branch of philosophy. So modern day chemistry owes a lot to alchemy, even though we tend to make fun of alchemy because one of the things they used to try to do, which is impossible, is to transform base metals. Now, base metals are just the cheap metals, such as lead or copper, and they were trying to transform it into silver or gold. So that was one of the things, and you can't just change lead or copper into silver and gold. Okay, there's a little bit more involved in that. Um, they tried to find a cure for disease, which is a really noble thing to do. And, and again, really great that they wrote down all sorts of recipes of things that they tried to do. Remember, in this time, a lot of things they tried to do probably killed the patient more than just um, letting the, 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 the disease progress. Um, they also tried to find a way of extending life, so to try to have never-ending life. So part of the reason that, that people laugh at the alchemists is because they were basically trying to find, now if we were in class, I would ask you, what do you think they were trying to find? And people, somebody might know, because if you get a little clue here with this philosophy thing, and you get a little clue here that they wanted never-ending life, so you might come up with that they were trying to find um, some sort of substance that they called dum, 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 the philosopher's stone. Alrighty, no one's actually seen a philosopher's stone. Philosopher's stone was just a compound that these alchemists or these philosophers were that were, they were trying to find. It was described as being a reddish stone. So you've probably heard of the Philosopher's Stone if you like to read or watch movies or you were around at all during the time, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So that was one of the things that Voldemort was trying to find was this Philosopher's Stone so that he could live forever and ever. One of the philosophers or the alchemists that's given credit for discovering one of the important elements on the periodic table is this brand person. He was in Germany in 1669 and he discovered phosphorus, which he um, named after the Latin term for giving light. Um, what he was trying to do again was try to make gold. And what he did is he took sand, which is yellowy colored, so golden kind of colored, and tons and tons of urine, liters and liters of urine, and he boiled the two things together. And what he ended up with was this substance that glowed brightly on its own. So he thought he was really onto something and didn't say anything to anybody. So then a few years later, along comes this other gentleman named Robert Boyle. He also discovered phosphorus. He would he is classified as an actual scientist. You'll learn about Boyle later on when you get into grade 11 when you do gases. 
he, Boyle did a whole pile of stuff, but he's got a, a gas law named after him. He also discovered at the phosphorus, um, but he decided to publish the process to make it, which was basically purifying urine or, or bubbling all the water off of urine, and you're left behind with some phosphorus, and then he purified it. And the thing that was kind of neat about this was matches at that time um, were made with uh, sulfur, and they used to spontaneously kind of just go on fire, and they found that the phosphorus worked a lot better so they used phosphorus on the end of the matches rather than using the sulfur and they were a lot safer um, by 1809 there were 47 elements that were discovered and by this time scientists were starting to notice patterns they're starting to notice some similarities between some of the elements so something like sodium and potassium kind of reacted the same when they were in water by 1863, this Newland guy, um, he organized, at this time they had 56 elements that they recognized. He arranged them into 11 groups. And there were a whole pile of other scientists that were arranging the elements into groups, arranging them um, into pattern groups, all sorts of things. We give a lot of credit to uh, Mendeleev, who was a Russian scientist, because he was very loud about his accomplishments. And basically what he did, he, is arranged, he arranged the elements by their atomic mass, so how much they weighed. But the really unique thing that he did, besides that he was very loud and very vocal about his accomplishments, was that he predicted this discovery of other elements. So where there weren't, um, where there could have been like a hole in the puzzle kind of a thing, he predicted what the element in there would be like. So I'm going to show you a little picture of Mendeleev. So this is Mendeleev. This is one of the nicer pictures that I found of him. You see some of the older pictures are really scruffy. Um, in Russia at the time, the style was great big beards and a lot of hair. So you'll see a lot of the Russian scientists from this time look like this. But if you look on here, all right, he's got boron here, he's got aluminum here, and then there's those little blanky dash and he has predicted um, some of the characteristics so aluminum weights the mass that he had was 27.3 um, atomic mass units and he's predicted that the element that should go here in this group along this row should weigh around 44 he's predicted this one should weigh around 68 this one 72 so he actually predicted things and then scientists later on actually discovered those elements and were able to fill in the holes which were really accurate to Mendeleev so that's why he's given a lot of a, a lot of credit because he did do a good job leaving these blank spaces there but there were a lot of other people that helped support his work so now our modern periodic table. If you remember our, mod our modern periodic table, it's arranged by atomic number, so the number of protons that are in the nucleus of the atoms, which we're going to talk about. There are now 118 um, elements on the periodic table. However, only those are naturally occurring. A lot of the other elements have been uh, produced in the lab. Some of them exist for like microseconds. So, you know, there's always a big debate. Does this thing actually really, really exist if it's only been on the, um, you know, it only exists in the lab for seconds. So let's take a really quick peek at the periodic table. So you should have a periodic table. I tried to find the simplest one I can find. If you can't print off a periodic table, um, load one onto your computer, like, like take a screenshot of one or download one or put one on your phone because you're going to need to uh, know some of the parts of this periodic table. Alrighty, so now how the periodic table is arranged, you can see across here, we've got 14 different groups, uh, sorry, 18 different groups along the top here, all right, numbered 1 through 18. This is going to come in, these numbers are going to come in to be very important when we get into bonding. But for right now, just know that there's 18 groups across. Um, what we have is the boxes show the information about each element, and we'll talk about this later on again, even though you've done it in grade 9. The element number, the atomic number is up here, usually in the corner, or sometimes it's up in the middle, but it's usually at the top of the box. Um, the symbol that we give to the element is in the box. Remember, scientists, well, most people are lazy. So if we have a short form way to talk about hydrogen rather than having to write out hydrogen all the time, we can use capital H, fantastic. All right. So we show the symbol. A lot of times they show the name as well. Some periodic tables don't show the name. And it also shows the atomic mass on the bottom there. Okay. 
Now, um, there's fancier periodic tables. This one had a, a little bit more information in. I went in a uh, paint program and removed all the extra stuff because this is all we really know, need to know for grade 10. And this will also be helpful for grade 11 as well. So if you're taking chemistry, this is the kind of stuff you need to jam into your head right now or just make sure you really, really understand it so when you go into grade 11, when you're looking at it, you're not having to relearn it all over again. You can just kind of remind yourself about it. Alrighty, so the periodic table now, you'll notice on your periodic table, there's like a thick line right here. Okay, that is our separation between metals and non-metals. Alrighty, so this goes along here. If you want to on your diagram, because I'm not too sure exactly how thick it came out, you can outline it again using a highlighter or another pencil or another colored pencil or just outline it with your pen or whatever just to show where that division is. So everything on this side is a metal. Everything on this side is a non-metal. Now we're going to talk about the families of the periodic table. And this little hydrogen in here that is a gas is definitely not a metal. It exists as a metal. No, it acts like a metal and it acts like a non-metal in some situations. And on some periodic tables, they will also have hydrogen over on this side just because it is a non-metal and it acts like a non-metal, but it also has characteristics, characteristics of a metal. Okay, so on this side of the periodic table, we've got our metals. Make sure you write that down. And on this side of the periodic table, we have our non-metals. Now, a lot of times kids are like, what the heck is this goofy little thing down here? So this whole group, the lanthanide series and the actinide series, everybody along this whole group would fit into this spot right in here, all right? But it just throws the whole table off, makes it really, really messy and awkward. So what scientists have decided to do is they put the, both of these groups right down here on the bottom. So if you can just imagine that these two groups were squished in here somehow, this is where all these would be. And a lot of these that are down here are pretty radioactive. So like here's things like your um, uranium, which is used in nuclear reactor, reactors. Here's your americanium, or Amer yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, um, that's in your fire detectors. So there's all sorts of uh, kind of neat elements on here. Now, Here's where you're going to cry a little bit. So we got to memorize a lot of our periodic table. It will save you the most amount of time in your whole entire life if you go into chemistry. And even if you don't go into chemistry, it doesn't matter because these element names and symbols are going to come up in your life anyway. And it's just kind of nice to be smart. All right. So you got to know the name and the symbol of the first 20 elements. In the past, I made kids also memorize the number. And then I felt like that was really mean, but it really wasn't mean, but whatever. So memorize them in order though. You know, hydrogen is number one, helium is number two, lithium is number three. It just makes life so much easier for you later on down the, the road. I will not ask you what the um, atomic number of the elements are, but it, it makes it a lot easier if you just memorize them in order. Okay, now here's the next part that's a lot, it's gonna make you feel kind of sad, but honestly, it will save you so much time if you've memorized these. So make sure you know the name and the symbol of these next 12. Write these down because you got to know the name and the symbol of them. So no copper, iron, gold, silver, lead, mercury, chromium, cobalt, manganese, tin, nickel and zinc. So make sure, write the symbols down and write the names next to them. If it's the kind of thing where you need to write it out 50 bazillion times, then do that. There's lots of online interactive quizzes that you can do. I'll link one in the, um, um, on the calendar, if I can find a good one. Um, and there's going to be a quiz on this. So, I, so it's going to be a quiz with the symbols and the element names. And it's going to be time to be really quick, but I'm going to give you five tries. All right. So, so it'll, it'll push a little bit. Um, of course, if you want to use your periodic table, if that's in front of you and you, you want to cheat off that thing, um, there's nothing I can do to make you not learn it. But honestly, you, you have to learn these symbols, all right, to get through this next part. It's going to save you so much time. Cause imagine if every time I ask you to look up, um, or like, put the symbol for gold down and you're like, it's AU and you're like, what the heck is AU? And then you got to look it up. Oh my God, it takes forever. Okay. 
So that is that for this part, and there's going to be more chemistry coming up. All right, so have fun on that quiz. And again, if you have any problems or questions or whatever, just make sure you email me.